G'day, so today I want to just talk about words and how I believe that words have power and that they can have power over us in a negative way, right? As well as a very positive way too, but, um, you know, <clears throat> I talk a lot about how I live with my mental illnesses, how I live with depression and anxiety, how PTSD is part of my life, right? I, I try not to, as much as I can, I try not to say that I suffer with this or I uh, battle against whatever because I feel like those words have power over me. If I am constantly telling somebody that I suffer from something, then suffering is exactly what I'll do, right? So I, I try not to do that as much as I can. That's that's the first thing. But the second thing that I want to talk about today, though, in relation to that, is how we speak about somebody else who might be living with these things too. I, I speak to a lot of people who say to me, that someone else, their brother, their son, their daughter, their neighbor, their friend, whatever, would, would benefit from doing some of the work that I do with people with me because they suffer from whatever. And I feel like just as important, just as it is, as it is important that we don't speak about ourselves that way, I'd really support you not to speak about somebody else that way, even if they do, because I think we can change the conversation around this stuff. We can change the way that we speak about mental illness. We can change the way that we speak about family disturbances, divorce. You know, you don't hear very hear, you don't very often hear somebody say, I'm going, they've just been through a divorce. It's always, they've just been through a really bad divorce, a really nasty divorce, or a really nasty breakup, or, or whatever it might be. So I'd really support you to try and use words for good rather than bad as much as we can. Remember, they have very strong power over us, and sometimes that's a very negative power.